It was February 1st, the year 2003. The world watched the returning of Space Shuttle Columbia after it spends two weeks in space with seven crew members on board. But suddenly the thing goes out of control. People watched in shock and horror as tragedy unfolded in the skies above. The Space Shuttle Columbia, a symbol of human ingenuity and exploration, met a catastrophic end during its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. In this video, we delve into the events leading up to the Columbia disaster, the heroic crew, and the enduring lessons learned from this heart-wrenching chapter in the history of space exploration. You are watching Space Progress Channel. Space Shuttle Columbia was one of five spacecrafts produced as part of NASA's Space Shuttle program. Columbia completed its first mission in April 1981, and it was the first of the shuttles to be built and was the first orbiter to officially launch the program. NASA Space Shuttles were imagined to be a reusable spacecraft between the years of 1981 and 2011. These space shuttles aided in space, exploration and contributed greatly to the scientific efforts of the time. However, the Space Shuttle program has not been without incident in 1986. Tragedy struck at NASA as Space Shuttle Challenger suffered a catastrophic explosion during launch. The incident killed seven astronauts and brought the safety of the Space Shuttle into question. The remaining Space Shuttles were grounded for over two years before resuming in September of 1988. Challenger's sister spacecraft Columbia would go on to perform several more space missions before it would make its final trip into space in January of 2003. The launch date for Space Shuttle mission was set for January 16. After years of multiple delays and setbacks, seven astronauts will board the Space Shuttle. Rick Husband, commander of the aircraft, William McCool, Michael Anderson, Ilan Ramon, Kalpnana Chawla, David Brown, Laurel Clark, all of them were crew members of the Columbia Space Shuttle and all of them died in this space tragedy. The main goal of Columbia Flight was to conduct scientific research in various fields including materials science, biology, and fluid physics. The payload bay of the Columbia housed a multitude of experiments that would help scientists better understand fundamental processes both on Earth and in space. The crew's dedication to advancing human knowledge was admirable, and their work was poised to contribute significantly to our understanding of the cosmos. Space Shuttle Columbia spends 16 days in space. They orbit the Earth 255 times and travel a distance of over 10 million kilometers. With this flight, the problem started from the very beginning. The starting point of this space shuttle was Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The orbiter vehicle is connected to a large orange-colored external fuel tank. This tank provides the fuel for the three large engines at the aft end of the orbiter vehicle. To help power the spacecraft into space, there are a further two solid rocket boosters, which are also attached to the shuttle orbiter vehicle. As is common knowledge, the rocket boosters and external fuel tank detach after several minutes after launch. After being postponed over a dozen times, Space Shuttle Columbia launched on January 16, 2003. NASA was under a lot of pressure to get Columbia into space. After so many setbacks, space exploration is expensive and the Space Shuttle program was no different. So on launch, everything needs to go right. Even the small mistake may result in safety concerns as launching is the most dangerous part of the whole mission. Firstly, Columbia appeared to have been successful with no abnormalities. It could have been the perfect shuttle launch. Everything goes as planned. However, the day after the launch, after looking over some of the video recordings, something peculiar was spotted by the NASA team. At 81 seconds after launch, a substantial piece of the foam insulation from the external fuel tank broke away from the outer shell and collided with the left wing's leading edge. At that point, the shuttle was climbing over 70,000 feet at a speed nearly two and a half times faster than the speed of sound. It was common for some of the foam cladding to break away from the external fuel tank during launch. The piece which had broken away on this launch was believed to have been around 20 inches in length. Those stationed on the ground investigated whether the impact to the left wing could be dangerous. It was not something that many at NASA were worried about because foam impacts had happened before on previous missions. What no one realized at the time was that in this case, there had been substantial damage inflicted on the orbiter's left wing leading edge. There was debate on the level of damage. The film impacted cores during the launch, 
Some say that the foam had weakened the leading edge, causing a piece to later break off during the mission space. Upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, despite the space shuttles being incredibly complex machines, they did utilize technology that was from the late Sunitis. There was no way for the crew of Columbia to know from their onboard instruments that there was a problem with the left wing. The only way to understand it was leave a space shuttle and make a spacewalk to inspect the wing itself. But no one was aware of the extent of the damage that was caused. Although information regarding the film was then forwarded to Commander Rick Husband. A few days later, after comparisons with other launches, NASA technicians were overall not concerned and neither was the Columbia crew. Everyone was scared, but the Columbia mission continued as intended with the hole in the left wing the whole time. The flight goes well, and despite tension, crew did everything that they supposed to. It was now February 1st, 2003. Space Shuttle Columbia prepares for its arrival back on Earth. A space vehicle or satellite needs to have enough angular velocity and distance from the ground so that it falls away from the Earth. The process of getting the orbital vehicle back on the ground is delicate and complex. To leave orbit, the shuttle's orbital maneuvering system rockets will begin to slow the spacecraft so that it can gently fall back to Earth on an ideal trajectory with just the right angle so that the heat-resistant surfaces on the shuttle are exposed and bear the brunt of the energy that is created with around 30 minutes to go until the touchdown. Space Shuttle Columbia had begun to enter the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean, and everything up till this point seemed normal. Those on the ground in mission control were confident on a safe arrival in Cape Canaveral, Florida. During the re-entry process, extreme heat is generated on the outside of the orbiter. As the orbiter falls, air is compressed on the front and below the shuttle, which generates temperatures which can reach over 1500 degrees Celsius. Ground control try to connect to the crew members of the aircraft, but they cannot. And the last replication was a roger from the commander of the aircraft, Rick Husband. We could expect that flames and plasma are visible inside the shuttle. This was normal and was even captured on video in Columbia's final moments. At 8.58 in the morning, the shuttle disappears. All astronauts were buried in the aircraft capsule. The Columbia disaster was a somber reminder of the inherent risks of space exploration. It prompted NASA to reevaluate its safety procedures and spacecraft design. The tragedy also highlighted the importance of open communication channels between engineers, scientists, and astronauts during missions. The loss of the Columbia crew was deeply felt by people around the world. These brave astronauts were pioneers pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and exploration. They gave their lives in pursuit of a greater understanding of the cosmos, and their sacrifice is a solemn reminder of the risks associated with space travel. Subscribe if you want to hear more about such tragedies. You are watching Space Progress Channel. See you in space.